Welcome back yet again to Ask Dan Anything with me, Dan Munro, confidence coach and founder of The Brojo and a lover of sandwiches. Today we have a question from a client of mine, Joe, and this is a really relevant question for so many people out there, especially those into some form of self-development. Here's how he puts it. Joe says, I am making some massive steps this month and have been acknowledging some old patterns of behavior that have been coming up. The patterns most recognizable are those of failure, not being good enough, and always thinking others are judging me. I can tell that my mind is constantly running and brewing on a future outcome, but I can't seem to back off the pedal and appreciate the moment. Any words of advice? Yes, Joe, I do have words of advice because I'm an opinionated fuck. We're talking about, let's let's simplify this and say we're talking about the not good enough story. The idea that you look at what you're doing and you only see the faults and the failures. You look at yourself and you only see flaws and weaknesses. You look at other people and you imagine that they're judging you negatively. All different versions of what we'll just call the not good enough story. Now, I've already, I've already made a video about how to deal with the not good enough story. And if I remember, I'll, I'll put the link in the comments below. But what I want to talk about today is a little secret around what's happening behind the not good enough story that I've only discovered quite recently. Whenever something happens in a pattern for me, I like to investigate the kind of similarities that it happens each time. So if something's happening to me repetitively, I look at those repeated situations and I particularly like to map out the build up to those situations and try to see is something continuously happening. What I notice about the not good enough story is that its volume gets the loudest when I'm trying to improve my life. It gets really loud when I'm taking big steps and making a lot of growth and a lot of changes and breaking out of my comfort zone and challenging myself or at least thinking about doing that. That's when the not good enough story volume gets up to 10 and starts berating me. And as I think about this, I look at Joe's thing and his the start of his question was, I am making some massive steps this month. And that's to me the key here. The not good enough story is coming up in response to your attempts to grow. And of course, I know Joe's situation personally. I know the kind of steps he's taken and they're big ones, big risks. At least they'll be perceived as risks in his mind. And I think I know why the not good enough story comes up there. See, we like to think of the not good, in, good enough story as some sort of, something that we can self-pity ourselves. Self-pity ourselves, Jesus. Something we can have pity on ourselves for. Poor me with this not good enough story. Here I am just trying to live my life and my mind won't leave me alone. But I think what's underneath this story is fear of success, not failure, but success. The only thing that's guaranteed with success is change. There is no such thing really as success, there's just transformation, to move from one place to another. We often call transformation the way we want it to go as success, transformation or staying the same, uh, transformation that we don't want or staying the same, we call that failure. And what we see is the not good enough story comes up a lot when we're really trying to transform in a way that helps our lives. I believe that the not good enough story and all the forms that it takes is your fear trying to manipulate you into staying the same. It knows you're changing. It can see that and it's scared. That's all fear can ever be is scared. It sees this change as a threat. It's weird, the way we're wired, we see familiar as safe, even if familiar is really dangerous. You can see this in somebody who's got, say, battered wife syndrome. They'll be in an awful abusive relationship, but they're more afraid of leaving in it, leaving it than staying it. Uh, they're more afraid of leaving it than staying in it. They're more afraid of going out and being single and meeting new people than they are of regularly getting abused by their husbands. And I looked at this and I think, why? And I think because for some reason, our brain is wired to see familiar as much more agreeable than unfamiliar, even if familiar is painful and dangerous. So what happens is your, your fear is automatically wired to go off 
whenever you're going into the unfamiliar. And anybody making progress is going into the unfamiliar. So the not good enough story, all it really is, is recognition of growth. It only comes up if you're growing. Now the trouble is we get lost in the content of it. He says the patterns most recognisable are those of failure, not being good enough, and always thinking others are judging me. His fear is just trying to say, be careful, you're going into something new. But it can't say that, because fear doesn't speak with truth, it speaks with fiction, it speaks with storytelling and movies. And so instead of saying, hey, by the way, you're doing something new, just take it easy, be careful, make sure you don't fuck this up, make sure you don't hurt yourself. Instead of saying that, it says, hey, you fucked that up, you failed, and oh my god, you're never going to be good enough, even though that's not true. The very fact that you're still alive shows you're always good enough, right? If you weren't good enough, you'd be dead. That's the case. End of story. So anything that says you're not good enough must be a fiction. And always thinking others are judging you. Well, they might be, but that actually has no effect on you. The others are judging you is just a way to influence you into back into safety, or should I say familiarity. It, it's like um, putting a, you know, if you chew your nails, there's, a, there's a, a, a lacquer that you can put on them that tastes disgusting. So every time you go to chew them, it tastes gross and you break the habit. Fear behaves in a similar way. It makes change taste gross. As you go near it, it gives you these projections of other people judging you, which could lead to humiliation, which is really tastes really yuck, of not being good enough, which could, which could lead to disapproval and more humiliation, and that tastes yuck, of failure, that tastes yuck. It projects all these untasty, unpleasurable images into your mind to try and push you back. And the reason I think it does this is because we don't acknowledge it. Fear is a very helpful emotion to have. It allows us to be careful as we grow. It keeps us alive while we adapt and change. I think of the, uh, the hermit crab as it jumps from one shell to the other. It's very exposed and vulnerable. It needs to go to the bigger shell in order to grow. It will get suffocated in its old shell and deformed. But in order to go from the other shell, from one shell to the other, it has to be very vulnerable. It has to go through a change that it doesn't understand yet, it doesn't know yet, it's not skilled in yet. And so it's right to be scared. It needs to watch out. Are they predators? Fear tells it, hey, get the new shell as close to you as possible so that that vulnerable leap doesn't take too long. Fear helps the hermit crab grow. Just like fear will help Joe grow. You know, um, Joe's working on his business. Fear will make sure that he doesn't just dive blindly into something he doesn't understand. That he makes progress, but he's weary of all the changes and makes sure that nothing really harms him too much. There will be pain, but not too much. But because he's not listening to fear, probably, and fighting against it and trying to shut it up, fear gets loud, like anybody who's kept out of a meeting that they're supposed to be in. Fear starts complaining loudly. It starts throwing up these images, these horrific images. So what I'd say is listen to your fear. Every time it says somebody's judging you, that could be true. It could be a threat. So go ask the person if they're judging you. Take all the fantasy away. Kill that fantasy. Go up to them and say, hey, look, I'm having some thoughts that maybe you're kind of, you know, looking down on me or something. It might just be my mind being crazy, but I thought I'd check in with you. What are you thinking? Or words to that effect. And every time you think, oh, I'm not good enough, ask yourself, well, if I'm not good enough, how am I alive? If I'm not good enough, how do I make it to here? Notice all the strengths you have that got you to this point. If you weren't good enough, you wouldn't be at this point. You wouldn't even be able to ask this question. Failure. How are you supposed to grow without failure? Success is here. Failure is actually above it. Failure is trans transgressing past success to the point of no ability. You only know growth if you're failing regularly, which is another video I've done later on, earlier on. So the point being here, if you're making massive steps forward and they're not good enough stories coming up in your mind, fantastic. It means you're making progress. Challenge a not good enough story by searching for facts. If you want, you can search for facts that prove it true. If it says, hey, you're a failure, well, go and find all the failures and prove that they killed you. Go and find all the failures and prove that they made you a weaker person. What you'll find is often the opposite. If you think that everyone's judging you, go and ask them what they're thinking. Prove it. Maybe they are judging you. At least you'll know what they're thinking and that you can handle it. Look, Joe, I hope that really helps.
For those of you who want to work on the Not Good Enough story, I really suggest you get a copy of my book, Nothing to Lose. I really go deeply into how to deal with the story. There's a whole chapter on it in there, um, and how to smash that apart. Send your questions through, dan at brojo.co.nz. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, all the standard push, and I'll see you guys next time.